All right, so episode eight. Good job. Yeah. Impressed with your vibe. Give us our daily bread. I want the whole basket. Cause I'm a hustle till I get it or I'm in a casket. Passionate for providing value in every way. Not cashing in for providing value every day. Paying it forward. Right thing, I'll do it till I'm dead. I hope you're hungry cause it's time for the daily bread. What's up, man? How are you? Let me turn the volume up. Let me turn the volume up here. There we go. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm super impressed with, with this lady over here. That's for sure. But she had a lot of amazing things to say about you. A couple of terrible things. But we won't mention that. But God has blessed you with a gift. And so the energy that you give off and the motivation that you give off do that. It does something. It does something. Something. It does something for us. Be able to uh, touch the masses. Yep. And, and so you're doing a great job at that. Man, I I, pre I appreciate that, man. That, like that that means the world to me because be able to actually impact people or help people impact other people, man. Like that's that's what it's all about, and that's why God put me on this earth and. I'm just now, like, shame on me for taking this long, but I'm just now realizing that. Five o'clock in the morning. Time to go to work. It's going to be 30, 60 now. Have a good one. Right, yeah. All right, so what are we doing right now? All right, so... Up at four o'clock this morning, getting some gas right now, headed down to Georgia. First meeting starts at nine, so we're in a rush to get down there. Meetings all day. We got a really cool meeting at 6 p.m. So at 6 p.m. got somebody coming, driving two hours from Alabama to me and talk about a business that she wants to start. Super excited about that, because you know, it's just, I mean, that's the probably truest form of providing value. I don't, you know, have any part of this business. I don't have any part of what she's doing. Um, but it's just a goal of, you know, seeing what I can do to help her along her journey. And if it helps her get started, stay motivated, um, then we're going to actually draw out some, some tactical plans for her. And if it helps, then, you know, that's the best ROI I can ever get. teach him how to not be so awkward. <laughs> Let me tell you just a little bit about what I do. Yeah. I am a state certified substance abuse counselor. I've been doing this for I mean, forever. After I start, stopped raising my kids, I worked in a law firm for a while. And then I um, went to working as a substance abuse counselor. Many people have to get up and go to their career, career yeah. and wait for a place in the year or the season to go on a mission trip. Mm -hmm. I get to go every day. Yeah, absolutely. I get to go out into my mission field every day mm -hmm. trying to save lives. And yeah. that's what I, I'm, I'm like, I can take you down the road a little yeah. bit and I will show you that these people are suffering. You know, yeah. America, we're in an epidemic right now. 65,000 people died last year. From drug overdoses, the leading cause of death, and I'm like, I want to be a part of the movement mm -hmm. that does something about that. So, I mean, and this is like insanely personal, but who cares? Um, is is that your background? Is that no. like your story? I don't. Okay. I mean, I have a story. Yeah. Um, like, I like family uh, or something. No. Okay. What happened was, is I grew up in a in in. And by a, the way, anything that you don't want on this camera. Okay. It yeah, does it's, not it's, have to be on. Okay, that, it's like. fine. How I got involved in. Um, substance abuse is okay I have a past of sexual assault and mm -hmm. rape okay. lots of, of that in my life as, yeah. a, as a young person and growing up mm -hmm. and then I got involved with someone in high school who was very abusive yeah. um, verbally and physically and it was it was like wrapped up my life was wrapped up in it mm -hmm. about you know about losing my life in this yeah. 
and um, totally lost myself. And he was an alcoholic, okay. very young, okay. but he was an alcoholic. And I was like, I don't ever want to be like him. Yeah. I don't ever want my life to take that path. Mm -hmm. And so I made a vow to myself that I won't, I won't get involved in alcohol. I won't yeah. get involved in drugs. Because um, it, it, seem, it seems to me like that always the story is like the per, as that person's story. Like they came up through one of those programs, and then having come through it, was like now I want to do this. Yes, it seems most, like every person I've ever talked people, to. Yeah, yeah. Most people, and you know when Which I first. Which is rare that you can be that passionate about something that mm -hmm. wasn't, but it was just like a part of it. You know. Yeah. It was kind of like um, secondary, I guess. And, yeah, and that's how my clients connect to me. They was like, Miss Ivy, yeah. how do you know all of this? How do you know this stuff? And I'm yeah. like, it's because I love you guys. And, you know, yeah. I research, and it's through y'all's experiences. And, and I take it, and I put it with somebody else's experience. Mm. And I was like, it's a God-given talent yeah. that I do this. Because oh, when yeah. I first started, when they found out I was a teetotal, meaning that I have no substance abuse history, mm -hmm. people pushed me away. Yeah. But once so they like, got to know me, yeah, yeah, you can't tell me anything. Yeah, yeah. But once they got to know me, they was like, hmm, I like you. <laughs> I'm always super envious of people that... Like the passion's obviously there. Yeah. <laughs> like, we I did this um, podcast the other day with this guy that plays the violin. And I'm like, it's usually like artists, and I'm like, when it's so easy to know that like that's what you're supposed to do. It's yeah. Like, yeah. When you do it, it's just like, okay, that's yeah, that's that's what you're supposed to be doing. Um, so like that, the cool thing is like that's the hardest step usually is mm -hmm. like figuring that out. And everybody asks so you me all the time. That out, and yeah. so like now it's like moving forward. So so tell me a little bit about the actual like business and what. Like with the stage you're in right now, like what you're looking for, what you need. We send these people to treatment. Mm -hmm. Whether it's 90 days, whether if we send them for 90 days, that's just long enough for them to get cleaned up in the inside. Yeah. If their mind is still messed up, and mm -hmm. we see a lot of those people die. Yeah. Or we send them to treatment for 12, 18 months. And while they're there, the only people that they're working for is they're working for that treatment center. Mm -hmm. We let them out with no aftercare, mm -hmm. with no money saved. Yeah. We fail them. Mm -hmm. We fail them tremendously. Sure. And so my idea is to design a, a treatment program that goes from intervention all the way down to aftercare and to the recovery mm -hmm. part. And another part of my program that I want to open up a female facility. Mm -hmm. I currently work at a male facility. He has three. This guy that I work for, his name is T.J. Wilson. He's okay. supposed to be here with me today, but he wasn't able to make it. Yeah. He's been out of prison four years. Okay. He was on crack cocaine for 15. Wow. He went through a therapeutic community, a program, got his life together, yeah. paroled out with nothing, 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 nothing. And so now he has three facilities, male facilities, and I work in all three of those, wow. you know, heading up his counseling, his treatment or whatever. Yeah. So I want to open up a female component of that, yeah. a facility that is going to take care of all their needs, but also send them to work. My wife and I are involved in a place in Greenville called The Family Effect. This is this is the thing that you need to look up. Okay. Because the family effect, um, it's female only, and it's my understanding that it's like the only, maybe the only in South Carolina, but I want to say I've heard it's the only in the southeast um, that the kids live with the moms yeah, at the facility. Yeah, because that's yeah that you don't find that yeah. often. But the fact that the kids can live there, absolutely, like that's huge. Because what happens to the kids? I mean, I guess just, most of the ki most of the women that I get, yeah, and because most of those women are court ordered. To whatever I'm doing, they're yeah. order. the children are already gone. Yeah. We've gotten yeah. to the plump point where, you know, somebody's taking the children. Yeah, I mean, so obviously funding's the big thing, um, but as far as, so what are you doing? Like, what's the plan right now? Like, what's like, are you doing? What are you doing on social media? Because I mean, that's that, the big. I, yeah, I'm not doing. Piece. I'm, yeah. like, I'm like terrified of social media. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like terrified of social media, mm -hmm. but I'm not doing much of anything. I post what I share what you share, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or somebody else's motivational yeah, yeah. Um, thing. But I'm not. I keep my face out there through pictures or whatever, yeah. so people know who I am. Yeah. But as far as like working social media, I'm not. I'm like I'm afraid people are gonna start thinking yeah. I'm arrogant. People are gonna start no. thinking that I'm yeah. crazy. And, and, I'm full of myself. And, and exactly what you just said is exactly what I thought. Yeah. And it was just a year ago when I started doing it, and that's exactly what I thought. I was like, like, it's the who am I? Yeah. Like, they were like, like who, who does she think she is? Yeah. Looking for permission. That's the yeah. thing. Like I was looking for permission. Like I was looking for someone to be like you. <laughs> have the abilities and skills yeah. and you have reached the level to where it's okay to go but like you don't need it yeah. you know you don't need the permission every like, time someone's with me and I go somewhere to speak like yeah. at, a, at a center to speak or, mm -hmm. or celebrate recovery to speak um somebody older client or yeah. whatever that I, that I've been in mean, that's been following me all this time will yeah. say Miss Ivy can I put it on live and I'm like oh, yeah. yeah go ahead put it yeah. on live yeah. and and that is as far as I, I go mm -hmm. is let them put it on live but yeah. other than that it's like mm -hmm. I mean, you just you have to do it like yeah. there's no I mean, you got to create a page, and I can show you how to do all that. Like that's not that stuff's easy. It's just the content coming out of each day. Um, like, 
the biggest mistake is not doing it a year ago, but the biggest mistake after that is not doing it now. Like, yeah. <laughs> like waiting another year. Yeah. I mean, there's, yeah. you just can't, you just can't wait to do that because the crazy thing about social media, like this whole like law of attraction and like all this stuff, is like the connections that you will make from it because the stories you're telling, like that's real. That's, those are real stories. Like yeah. I'm telling stories, like, hey, I sold 50 policies today. Like, great. I'm like, that's not real. Like, that is good. Like, that is like, still okay. good. Yeah, but like, like. <laughs> The stories you're telling, like, those are, like, real stories. And the interesting thing is, what I've been finding is that these, like, high-level entrepreneurs, like, insane successful people, like, they've all got dirty pasts and dirty stories mm-hmm. like, that, that they either have been open about sharing or are still hiding, yeah. but they've all got them. And so, like, they'll resonate with those stories because, like, they've got a little piece of that. Like, yeah. Every single one of them. Is, so that's why I think so many... I think you'll be able to make so many good connections by putting these stories out there because it'll resonate with people that are like on this crazy level because deep down inside, like those stories are them maybe not that long ago. (laughs) Absolutely. Like maybe long ago, but maybe like just a year or two ago. He's only been clean. He's still on parole. Yeah. That is his building behind there. It's one of his buildings. Yeah. And I see him go hard every Mm -hmm. day, every day. I'm like, I'm tired on your home. No, we got to do this. We got to do this. And he just Mm -hmm. opened up. Uh, a construction company for the yeah. guys who work with him, yeah. who come through the facility, yeah. so they'll have a place to work. And um, so he's doing good for himself. He's like, yeah. I still check in, I still go and yeah. you know get tested. Yeah. He says, but that's not gonna stop me. Mm-hmm. And so four years, five years clean, five years in, he's nine years clean. Yeah. And um, he just go hard every day. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. And so, and so I think like what, what will happen from that is like, I think that will create opportunities for funding galore like because those stories will resonate and like if you start reaching out to people that have been a little open with their stories and getting them to being able to interview them and, like, mm-hmm. hey, tell that's me what I want story. to do like, yeah yeah that is that is my, like, my dream. favorite my favorite quote ever is every successful person has a painful story will your painful story have a successful ending mm-hmm. like but they've all got it yeah they've all got it. I know I'm um, like every person if they if they don't think they, if you, if they don't appear to have it, then they just are still hiding. Mm-hmm. It. They're <laughs> like, still hiding. It's there. It's there. Yeah. And I always can pick up on it. I'm like, mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I'll be like, how did you know that? And I'm like, I don't know. It's my gift. Sometimes it drives me yeah. insane. Yeah. And, you know, but I, I just know, yeah. I, you know, because I've do, been doing this so long, and I pay attention to body language. I pay attention to what you're saying. I pay attention to your passion. Yeah. I pay attention to it all. Yeah. And people say all the time, I say, like, what? profession. I was like, I'm nosy and I like to talk. <laughs> what other profession yeah. would I ever be in yeah. besides counsel? I can get in your business and talk a lot. And the, and the reality is like the crazier, the more horrible and terrible their situation was is almost like proportionately where they go to. Like Absolutely. It's, it's, the, it's the weirdest thing. Like, like To the point where the other day I was talking to my business partner and I was like, I, I try to figure out, like, is there a way that we can like make like young people like experience biggest nuts <laughs> like humanly like, possible <laughs> uh, is there like a way that you can like like just force these terrible things on people early like cause like yeah. like I don't want to do it at 40 like I'd love to do it at like 20 and get it out of my system absolutely and, like, but like that's so fun like, like the way I grew up I grew up like a really cons- a really conservative home and um, had a, you know great family life and all that kind of stuff and like you go on this like little path and you're like like, wait a second, you start like looking around, you're like, all these people have these crazy stories, like, something crazy is going to happen at some point. It's like, <laughs> yeah. you're like, you're like, yeah, you're like, you're like waiting going, for it, like, yeah, oh my yeah. gosh. And it happened for me, that's for sure. And and now coming out of that, I'm like, oh, now I get it. Because there was like, that was the purpose Absolutely. behind that. And it had to happen. So like, I'm glad it happened then and not, you know, later. Absolutely. Because when my clients hear my story, especially males, you know, if the, hear the stories about the sexual assault and, mm-hmm. you know, and all those things, they're mad. And I was like, Miss Adam, I'm so mad that that happened to you. Yeah. I'm like, don't be mad. Yeah. Because it's made me who I am today. Yeah. It's made I'm me be able to grateful. reach the people yeah. that that I'm yeah. able to reach today yeah. because of the things that I've gone through. I said, yeah. that it doesn't suck. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But it has made me who I am today. Yeah. And I said, I can love you today mm-hmm. because I learned to love myself through all of that. Yeah. And I was like, hey, look, it, don't be mad. I was like, get mad about what you're going through. Yeah. And so we can do something about it. Yeah. And so, I mean, the way you talk about it, like, there's no reason. <laughs> there's no reason not to be documenting at all. Like, you could be doing something every single day on social, and it would be incredible. But, like, I know in the short term, that's not going to, like, 
help like okay like what do we need to do like right now so like what what's like your immediate stuff um, like plans like I need to find someone that can do this I need to find someone that can do that because like that's one thing that I, I'm, I'm, I am good at is is connecting people it's that first component is getting that building yeah. open and getting those women situated just giving them a place you know I had a team and I told them I said we get this building open and this is when I had my partner I was like I don't have to take a salary I have a team that's not that they've come through this they survived it yeah. they don't have to take a salary I said yeah. we could go the first couple of years mm -hmm. without me taking a salary so where does the where does the funding come from in that scenario so like okay you've got a building now where does the revenue come from is it from the state is it from the, the county is like, it funds itself. The men go to work, to work, and they pay rent every week. Okay. They go to work, and um, they know yeah. every week that they pay two hundred and twenty dollars. That's yeah. for three meals a day. That's for transportation to and from work, okay. to all their meetings, to their treatment. That's yeah. inside that building. Um, they pay that. So, so that's one. So that's one way. So you got the people that are in the facility. They're working. They're paying basically paying their way. Mm -hmm. uh, but the initial upfront. I mean, that basically is going to have to be somebody that just donates, someone that just wants... No matter what, I can't take out the loan because mm -hmm. it has to be connected to my program. Yeah. And he says, you're going to have to find a silent partner. You're going to have to find an, an investor. You know, the funny thing about what's going on with me right now is that I completely forget that this person over here has a camera. <laughs> and so I'm, like, sitting here telling, like, you need to make a video. You need to make a video. But I just completely forgot that you just made the video. <laughs> like, like, I mean, it's, like, it's literally, like, that's... Fortunately, I've been able to tune him out like enough to where I don't even. I mean, I don't. I didn't even here. realize he was here either. <laughs> but American Ninja. <enjoy. laughs> yeah. But so I think the big thing that I can help, just like strategically, is just like helping you like with starting your page. And Absolutely. Your stuff even if there. I can do that, because it's a lot of clients. Like because let's just create your page real quick. Because if we create it, we can go ahead and give it a name. Yes. And if it has a name, then we'll be able to link it in this episode tomorrow because I don't want to I don't want to post this tomorrow and, and not be able to give people like, the okay. right place to go to like say like hey coming soon we'll have a page for you to yeah. go and like so if tomorrow we're able to put the this episode out and say like hey guys like it would mean a lot to me for you to go to this page and like it and start following it then and the links in the comments like that'll be way way better so okay. What we want you to do, so just just log in like with your personal Facebook okay. stuff and TJ, don't watch your <laughs>this meeting um, was so important for me because it was it was a day that was chaotic it was a day that a lot of things went wrong but then there was this truth and this for me this solidifying moment of just sitting across from another human being that I don't know that I owe nothing to that I have no personal vested interest in, but to be able to pour as much as I possibly could into for over an hour for the sole purpose of hoping that it may spark something and that it may ignite this flame that's already burning inside her, but that it may push that forward to where she goes off and creates something incredible and it impacts tens, hundreds, thousands of lives. And I could play a potential role in that. Like for me, it was one of the greatest moments so far in this experience with this daily vlog. And it's, you know, eight episodes in. But it was just, to me, foreshadowing of so many experiences that will happen over the next few weeks, over the next few months. And I cannot wait to experience more moments like that. And I can't wait for you to be able to experience moments like that with me.